Hey, hey, welcome to a new Tuts Plus course. I'm Adi, and in this course, you'll learn how to create static websites using Hugo. Uh, Hugo is a free static site generator that allows you to write most of your website's content in Markdown. It then takes that Markdown code and compiles it into HTML code, which it then bundles along with all the CSS and JavaScript to create a functional website in no time. In this course, I'll show you how to install Hugo, how to pick a theme, and configure your website with just a few lines of code, how to add content, and also how to publish that website to a live server using Netlify. Now, if you're gonna do exactly what I do in this course, uh, you'll get a live static website for exactly zero dollars. Hugo is free and I'll also show you a cool way of hosting uh, a website on a live server for free. Sounds good? All right, let's get started then. Uh, but first, a quick, quick message from Envato Elements and then we'll get the ball rolling. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to web and email templates, WordPress themes, UI kits, and more. There are millions of digital assets to choose from. They have simple commercial licensing and you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now using the link in the video description. All right, let's uh, talk about Hugo in more detail and also learn how to install it. That's coming up in the next lesson, so I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we'll uh, talk more about Hugo, about why you would want a static website, and at the very end, we'll be installing Hugo. Let's go. So as I was saying in the intro video to this course, uh, Hugo is a static site generator. You can also think of it as a framework, although the uh, technical term is as I said, a static site generator. Hugo is open source and it sits right at the top with the most popular uh, static site generators like for example, Jekyll. If you've ever used Jekyll, then Hugo is basically the same thing but with slight differences. And um, actually from what I've uh, tested so far, it's uh, super, super easy to use. Uh, you can uh, get Hugo at gohugo.io. And this is also the place where you'll find the documentation right here, docs. You can also search them directly from, uh, from the homepage. And the documentation is your best friend. Hugo's is um, very well made. It covers every single aspect of working with this generator. So you'll have really no problems getting a website up and running. Now, with that said, what are the benefits of using a static website and a static website generator versus a dynamic website, like for example, one built with WordPress. Well, I would say there are two uh, main benefits. One is the speed of the end product, and the second is the ease of use. So talking about speed, a static website is just static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. A dynamic website in comparison is a website that's uh, that connects to a database. It has a back end. There is usually PHP code involved. So when you're creating one with WordPress, you need to know a lot of things. Uh, you need to know how to work with WordPress, first of all, but you might also be required to know a bit of PHP to make modifications. And these websites will usually query a database to retrieve the content. Uh, this can lead to uh, big loading times for your website, which is not good. So in terms of performance, a static website is really, really good because all it has to do is load a couple of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Uh, the second um, benefit of using a static website is the ease of use. So it's really easy to create one and it's really easy to maintain one. And for a lot of websites, you might be surprised that um, 
you don't actually need WordPress. Like for a simple presentation website, why you, would you use WordPress? Uh, you know, to to have all those databases and stuff in in the background, when a simple static website would suffice. So, again, a static website, easy to create, easy to maintain, easy to deploy also. Now, let's go back to Hugo and I'll show you how to install it on your system. And this is really cool, actually. Hugo can be installed in um, on both Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, all you need is a terminal and let me show you how. So if we look at the documentation under getting started and install Hugo, you can see here all the operating systems that uh, support Hugo. And depending on your operating system, there are a few ways of installing it. So if you're using Mac OS, you can install via Homebrew or Mac ports. These are package managers. If you're using Linux, then you can install via Homebrew as well. If you're using Windows, you can install via Chocolatey or Scoop. I'm using Mac OS, so I'm gonna uh, install it using Homebrew. Uh, if you don't know what Homebrew is, you can find it at brew.sh. It's basically a package manager for Mac. So let me open terminal. And if you don't have Homebrew installed, you can follow the directions here. If you wanna check, if you have Homebrew installed, you can just do brew version. In my case, uh, or uh, sorry, it's actually dash V. Uh, in my case, it's Homebrew 3.2.9. So this is already installed. Now to install Hugo using Homebrew, all I gotta do is copy this code, paste it in my terminal, hit enter, and that's gonna download all the necessary files and install it for me. And there you go. And now that it's installed, we need to create a website. So I'm gonna CD or change directory into my desktop. And I'm gonna say Hugo new site. We'll give this a site name, let's say Hugo demo. And I'm also gonna say dash F YAML. This uh, last part is optional. Essentially, it allows us to use the YAML format for the configuration file instead of the default TOML. I just think that YAML is a bit easier to, uh, to understand. So again, Hugo, new site, we give uh, the name of the site, and then we hit enter. And just like that, our new website was created on my desktop, in your case, in whatever folder you have previously set. Now, this uh, gives us some uh, next steps we can take, like downloading a theme, adding some content, and starting a live server. We'll do that in just a little bit. For now, here is the folder it created for us, Hugo Demo. And as you can see, it already populated this folder with a bunch of content. We have the configuration file, which we'll edit in a future lesson. We have a folder for our content, uh, for our layouts, static. This is where we'll put all of our static assets like images. And then this is a folder for themes, which will house all of our themes. All right, so now that Hugo is installed and we created our first website, it's time we pick a theme for it. We'll do that in the next lesson, so I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we'll uh, pick a theme for our Hugo website and we'll also start working on the configuration file. Let's go. One of the great things about the Hugo generator is that it has a lot of themes available for free. So if you go to the official website and then themes, you'll find the full list right here. And obviously if you don't find one that uh, you like, you can always make your own, but starting with a pre-made theme and then uh, slightly tweaking that is um, pretty much always the simplest option. So just, um, go through all of these themes and see which one you like. You can also click on each theme and uh, see a preview here. And you also have an option to download it for 
this demo we'll be using a theme called paper mod it's a it's a very nice minimal theme and um, usually on pretty much every single theme you'll find instructions on uh, how to install it uh, in this case uh, the theme is hosted on github under hugo dash paper mod and all you have to do for this one is to uh, copy this code right here we then need to go into the Hugo demo folder that we created and we just paste that code. Uh, notice you also have to have Git installed on your system. So once we do that, this basically clones this repository into our themes slash paper mod folder. And the result is that we now have a new folder inside our themes folder called paper mod and this is a folder that contains all the files necessary for the theme to work to activate the theme we must edit our configuration file for that we can simply drag and drop this entire folder into visual studio code but you can also use the terminal and you can say something like code dot and that's going to open the current folder in Visual Studio Code, just like this. Now, if this doesn't work for you, you got to make sure that Visual Studio Code is installed in your applications folder. And here I'm talking about Mac OS. And then you can do Command Shift P and then Shell Command Install Code Command in Path. If that doesn't work either, uh, first do an uninstall and then do an install and you should be good to go so inside uh, code uh, let's open up the config.yaml file uh, base url i recommend for starters you set this to blank language you can leave it like so title this is the title of your website let's call this demo for hugo and to activate our theme, all we got to do is say theme paper mod, right? So we're just using the exact name of the theme that uh, we downloaded. So let's go ahead and save that. And finally, let's go back to the terminal and we'll do Hugo server. This is a, a really cool thing. Hugo server opens up a local development server at localhost. 1313 that compiles files in real time so any changes that you make will be watched by this hugo server and uh, the uh, the page that you open in your browser will automatically be refreshed so if we go to localhost 1313 here it is our website this new theme is already applied as you can see from this footer here uh, we have the site title, we have this toggle for light and dark, and we're pretty much good to go. So as a quick uh, recap, you need to find a theme for Hugo, then you need to download that theme and place it in your themes folder, then open up config.yaml and activate that theme by saying theme colon and the name of your theme. Then you can open up a terminal and say Hugo server to open up a server for local development. That's gonna be opened at localhost colon 1313. And as you'll see in future lessons, whenever we make a change to our website's content or styling, that's gonna be automatically uh, compiled and our website here will be refreshed automatically all right so now we have a website we added a theme to it and we also started working on the configuration file the next step for us is to add our content we'll do that in the next lesson so i'll see you there
welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we're adding our website's content and we're also learning a few handy tips and tricks for uh, easily working with Hugo themes. Let's go. All right, so let's talk about the folder structure for a bit because uh, I showed you the uh, working directory here called Hugo Demo, but I didn't actually go through these uh, subfolders in more detail. Let's start with content or the content folder. This is where all of your actual content will be posts, articles, pages, folders, subfolders, all of it will be hosted right here. And we'll get to this in just a little bit. Layouts is usually for theme overrides. So a theme comes with its own layouts folder. And this contains all the HTML files that are used to render your website, right? And whenever you want to modify such a layout, you can either change the file here directly, or you can copy this file into your own layouts folder and overwrite it there. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Static is for all the static assets like images, and themes is the folder that contains, well, all your themes. Now, let's talk about the actual content. How do you add content to your website? Well, you can go to the terminal and you can say, Hugo, new, and let's say I wanna create a new post. I need to put that in the posts folder. So I'm gonna say posts slash, and then the name of my post. Let's say first.md and .md indicates this has a markdown extension. This is very important. Make sure to remember to use that. And that created the posts folder in my content, and inside that, I have a first.md. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code, and let's open that. And as you can see, Hugo already created this header for us. This is called the front matter, right? And it's basically a set of instructions or settings for a particular piece of content. In our case, for a post. So everything that's inside front matter is inside these three dashes. And it's basically a collection of key value pairs. This is the key, this is the value. So this is the title of the post, the date at which it was created, and then draft by default is set to true, but we can set it to false, and that will get it to be displayed on the actual website. If you set the draft to true, then it's not gonna be displayed on the website. And this is a great way of uh, you know, keeping track of what articles you're ready to publish and the ones that are not yet ready. So let's go back to the terminal and we'll do Hugo server to open up a server back to our website. And if we do a refresh here, you'll see that we now have our first post displayed right here. If we click it, it opens up the single page for that post. Now we can add some content here in the form of markdown. And if you don't know how Markdown is written, well, you can simply do a Google search and you'll find tons of resources on Markdown syntax. Here's one on GitHub Guides. And you can see here how you can write Markdown. Basically, you would use a very simple syntax. Let's say I want the heading. I would say this is a heading one. This is a heading two, and then whatever paragraphs you have, you just write it like so. This is a paragraph. Of course, uh, Markdown has a lot of special syntax you can use for italic text, bold text, lists, images, links, block quotes, and so on and so forth. So now that we've written our content in one of these posts and we saved it, 
the Hugo server automatically detected the change. It rebuilt our website and it refreshed our page. And here is our heading one, heading two, paragraph, all is well. So that's one way of creating new content. You just open up your terminal and you say Hugo new and whatever you write after new is going to be placed in the content folder. In my case, I said I want this first MD file to be created under posts. But you don't have to use the terminal. For example, you can go into your finder window, your explorer window, or in your code editor, and you can say, okay, inside posts, I want a new file. Let's call it second.md. Uh, if you're going to do this manually, you'll have to write the front matter manually as well. Second post, uh, of course, you'll have to write the date here yourself. Let's add some content to that as well. So now if we go back to our homepage, you can see that we have two posts being displayed. Pretty cool, right? Now, how do you add an image to a post? Well, it's actually quite simple. Let's uh, edit this first MD. And here on the front matter, I'm going to say cover and then image. I'm going to place an image link there in just a little bit. You can specify a, an alt. You can also specify a caption if you want. And for the image, let's, um, let's go into static. And I'm just going to paste an image here that I had lying around on my computer. This is a, a photo that I took. And let's uh, rename that as headphones, for example. So this is placed, as you saw, under the static folder. You can create a subfolder here as well if you want. Let's say IMG and I'm going to place these inside IMG. And then here in front matter, I'm going to say IMG slash headphones dot JPEG. Save that. And now let's see, why isn't this working? Maybe it's because I have a uppercase extension there. And there it is. This is how you add a cover image to a post, right? This is what it looks like on the home page. If you click on it, this is how it's being displayed. Now, you can do a lot more to customize your Hugo website. And you can do that simply by using the configuration file. And uh, these changes really depend from theme to theme. So make sure to read the theme documentation to see exactly what's possible. For this particular theme, paper mod, here are some of the things we can do. I'm going to open the config YAML and I'm going to do the following. Let's say we want a menu displayed, right? To go to the uh, maybe categories, tags, uh, maybe archives. How do we do that? Well, it's simple. We say menus, or sorry, menu. We say main. And then we need to tell Hugo what kind of menu items we want. First, we start with an identifier. Let's say one for categories. Then the name should be categories. So this is the actual text of the link. URL, I'm going to say slash categories and then slash again. And then we can specify a weight. So the weight is used to determine the order of the menu items. Then it's simply a matter of rinse and repeat. Let's make one for tags. We'll give it weight 20. So the order is category and then tags. Let's duplicate this again for archives. And we'll set a weight to 30 on this. So now, just like that, we have a menu on the right side of our header. And if we click it, it takes us to each respective page. We don't have yet all the pages. For example, we don't have an archives page, but 
we can easily create that under content. Let's create a new file. We'll call it archives.md. And in here, let's use front matter. We'll say title archives layout. And actually, let me do this archives. And I'll show you why we, we set that in just a little bit. URL is going to be slash archives slash again. And then we'll also add summary archives. And finally, let's close that front matter. So now we have an archives page. Now, where did this come from? Well, if we look into our theme under layouts, default, we have an archives HTML, right? So this is the template that we're using in this page. See here, layout, archives. This is the file that um, we are referring to. As you'll see, if I do this and we go back to the page, uh, that change is reflected back. Now, this is actually a good opportunity to show you uh, theme overrides. So let's say that uh, you want to use this archives template, but with some of your own changes. Well, you can do the changes directly in the theme directory, but if you're going to update that theme at some point, those changes will be lost. To get around that, you can create a local copy of the file you want to change, and that will stay safe in case you're updating the theme. Here's how you do that. Uh, you go into your layouts folder, and you have to match the exact folder structure from your theme. So archives HTML inside our themes folder is under layouts underscore default archive.html. So we'll go here under layouts. We'll set it, we'll create a new folder, call it default. And inside that default folder, archives HTML. We're going to copy the contents of the original file, paste them here. And we can then make whatever changes we want. Let's say that I want an HR below the title. So now, if I go back to my website, you'll see that our version of archives HTML is being used because we have this HR, while the theme version of the file does not have that change. So that's how you can easily change any layout from your theme by using um, these overrides. Just again, remember to match the exact folder structure from your themes folder into your layouts. So that is the archives page all done. What else can we do to the content in Hugo? Well, we can add tags and we can add categories, right? Because we have these pages for a good reason. So on each post, we can add tags and categories. Here's how you do that. Let's open first MD, for example. And to add tags, you simply say tags. And here we actually have an array, a list of items, right? And you would set your tags, let's say HTML and CSS. And you can also add categories. So categories, again, a list, let's say, for example, tech. So now, if we go back to our website, uh, you can see that our first post displays the tags at the very bottom. And now if we go to categories, you can see that the tech category is displayed. Same goes for tags. We can see all the available tags and they have a little number here showing us how many posts are tagged with that particular entity. And if we click on any of them, it uh, shows us the posts for that specific category or tag. 
Pretty cool, right? Very, very simple. Now, when it comes to how posts are uh, displayed, we can also add a couple of things. For example, we can enable hyperlinks to the full image size on posts. So currently, if we click on this image inside the post single page, nothing happens. However, we can say params and then inside cover and then under that link full images true. Once we do that, this will enable us to click on an image on the cover image of a post and open it at full size. What if we want to add some breadcrumbs? We can do that by saying show breadcrumbs and set it to true. So now each post will display this, these breadcrumbs on the top of it. And by the way, all of these options are theme specific. So you'd have to consult your theme documentation for that. We can also display a reading time. We can say show reading time true. And that will display a reading time indication here, just after the date. We can display some share buttons. Right? Under the post, social sharing. We can also display navigation suggestions below a post by saying show post nav links to true. So that's going to display next page here, preview page here, really really simple finally we can also make some changes to our home page by uh, choosing to display some additional information now for this a uh, theme in particular we can enable something called home info mode and it goes something like this home info params title i'm gonna say hello stranger and then the content and you can type in like an introductory message. Then you can decide, okay, I want some social icons. You would give these a name. And based on the name, um, this is going to generate an icon. And then you can specify a URL. So where does that link take you to? Let's just say facebook.com. And you can repeat this for as many icons as you want. In my case, I just added Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub. So now, if we go back to our, um, to our page here, uh, I also went ahead and um, changed the single quotes, double quotes here and removed the quotes on the content because it was uh, giving out errors. Uh, you really have to uh, consult the YAML documentation to see exactly uh, what the syntax is. So once we did all of this, our page now has this uh, home info section with a title, a content, and those three social icons that, uh, that we added. So that's our basic website. We have a simple header with the ability to change the color scheme from light to dark. We have a menu. We have this intro section, hero area, whatever you want to call it. And then we have our posts. And then finally, at the bottom, a footer. And we also have this uh, nice back to top. Now, probably a lot of you are thinking, but Adi, how do I edit all of this? How do I edit the layouts? How do I add my own logo? Well, it's very, very simple. You need to find the layout or the template that you want to edit. Let's say, for example, you want to add your own um, logo, right? Well, that particular template can be found under themes, layouts, and probably under partials. Let's see, header.html. And it is. As you can see here, we have a div class logo and this is actually already implemented. Uh, you can display an image with your logo. You just need to use 
the proper parameters. And you can check out the theme documentation for this. But let's say that you don't want to be bothered with any of that. What if you just want to display an image as a logo? Well, you need to duplicate this file in your own layouts folder using, of course, the proper folder structure. So in our case, it would be layouts, partials, header.html, right? You would then remove all of this and add your own image with your own logo. And you should be good to go. In fact, any kind of change that you want to make to the layout of your website can be made to these files right here. These are all the HTML files. If you want to access the CSS, then you, do, you need to go to Assets, CSS, and you'll find everything here. Again, to make sure that your changes are preserved, don't just edit the CSS directly in the Themes folder, but instead copy that file into your working directory and make your changes there, making sure, of course, to preserve the folder structure. All right, so now our website is complete. Well, at least the demo version, right? On a real website, you'll probably spend a lot more time tweaking everything and making sure all of your content is added, all of your styling is on point. But for the purposes of this course of learning the basics of Hugo, I believe this very simplistic website that we created will do just fine. Now, the last step in our journey to uh, create a website is to publish it right to a live server so that it's accessible to everyone. I'll show you how we can do that for free in the next lesson. So I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this final lesson, I'll show you how to host your Hugo static website for free using a service called Netlify. Let's go. Before we get into all that, I just want to show you one quick last thing. Once you finished uh, developing your uh, website with Hugo, you can go ahead and enter the Hugo command. This will basically build your site and it's going to create a public folder with all the HTML, CSS, JavaScript images and all of your site assets ready to go. You can control how the building is done by um, changing some parameters in config.yaml. Again, you have to consult the documentation for that. But essentially, once you have this public folder, this is the one or these are the contents that you're going to upload to your live server. Now, we're not going to do that today. So I'm going to actually delete this public server, this uh, public uh, folder, excuse me. Instead, we're going to use a service called Netlify. Now, this is a really cool service. With it, you basically connect a GitHub repo, you give it a command to build your website. If you're using a workflow like that, like maybe if you're using NPM or Grunt or Gulp, or in this case, Hugo, we can tell Netlify to build it and then upload it to a live server. And that happens automatically. So let me show you how we can quickly do that. First of all, we need a GitHub repo with all of our files, right? So I'm actually going to go to the terminal and I'm going to say git init. And I'm doing that inside my working directory. Uh, this is basically <clears throat> going to create a, a GitHub repository. It's going to initialize a, a GitHub repository in that folder. Next, I need to create a dot git modules file in the same folder because I need to add this paper mod theme as a sub module. This is going to make it so much easier to update once we have uh, all of these files in, uh, in GitHub. So in here, I'm going to say something like this sub module 
theme slash paper mod. I give it the path that I have right here in my working directory, and then a URL to the GitHub repository of my themes. Okay, I save that. And now, because I'm using Visual Studio Code, this is already integrated with GitHub using my own account, and I can just commit the changes. Let's call this uh, initial commit. And now after authorizing GitHub, this is gonna ask me where I want the um, repository to be published or how, is it public or private repository? I'm gonna select public repository and now it's publishing to GitHub and that's it. Now, if I go back to GitHub, you can see that I have a Hugo demo repository updated just now and this contains all of my website's files including see the themes inside i have this uh the sub module that i defined previously now if i click this it's just going to take me to the github page of the original theme pretty cool right all right so now that we've uploaded this to github we can go to netlify we can create an account. I'm gonna log in because I already have an account. And right here I have um, a site that I created yesterday when I was uh, testing uh, Hugo. So here we say new site from Git. We connect with GitHub. That's gonna ask me for which repository I wanna use. In my case, it's Hugo demo, so this one. This is gonna ask you which branch you want to deploy. By default, it's master. We're gonna leave it at that. Uh, base directory, we don't really need to, um, to worry about this right now. Build command, we're gonna say Hugo because that's what we wanna use. And we wanna use the publish directory as a publish directory. Uh, excuse me, public, not publish. Uh, show advanced. We're gonna add the Hugo version variable right here. And for to find out the Hugo version, we can just say Hugo version in here. And it's 0 0.87.0. So once that's done, we can just hit deploy site. And um, Netlify will do its magic. It's gonna run Hugo, it's gonna create that public directory for us with all the necessary files and by the way this is free uh, there are paid options for a netlify but if you just want a very fast free option and this is the way to do it so right now netlify published our site at this address right here and i said earlier that it sets up a custom domain for us uh, we actually have to do that ourselves uh, so we can buy a domain, a custom domain, and we can attach it to this website for free, by the way. It's only going to cost us the uh, domain name. Uh, but for now, it published our address, our website to this address right here. And we can open that and we can see it. There it is. Demo for Hugo. So we can now go to categories, tags, and we can see our archives, and everything works pretty much flawlessly. Uh, I say pretty much because you can see that some of the links don't really work, right? And when we open our post here, we can't see the image. So what's going on there? Well, we do need to make one final change. We need to copy this address right here we need to go back to our code, open up config YAML, and the base URL, we got to set it to the final address of our website. Now, here's something really, really cool. I'm going to commit these changes to GitHub, change the base URL, and I'm going to sync that. And 
Netlify is so amazing that it detects these changes in my GitHub repository, so it redeploys my website. So now, if I refresh my website here, you'll see that the image works, all the links are working. I can go here, I can go back to the home page. Everything works really well. And again, if I wanna make another change to my website, let's say I wanna change the first post. Let's say I wanna change its title to, this is the first post on Hugo, right? Save that, publish your change to GitHub, and you'll see that Netlify will update our website automatically for us. So let's wait a little bit, and once we refresh, we can see the updated post. How cool is that? And as I was saying in a previous uh, video, the exact cost of all of this, of getting uh, a static website created and hosted publicly was zero dollars because Hugo is free, Netlify is free for this kind of application, all is well. And that's about it for this course. Uh, it was a quick introduction to working with Hugo and I believe it gave you all the essential information to get you started on this path of uh, creating a static website. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with Hugo and I encourage you to uh, explore the documentation and play around with the tool yourself so um, you can determine if it's a good fit for your workflow. You'll actually be surprised how many times you don't actually need a bulky CMS like WordPress to create a website. Uh, for a lot of um, website types, static is the way to go, honestly, and Hugo is uh, a great tool for that. With that said, thank you very much for watching this course. I'm Adi, and until next time, take care.